Well, God bless you in the wonderful name of our living Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Good day, everybody. This is Bob Hagan, and this is As He Leads on the Uptime Network. Um, <clears throat> very thrilled to be with you today. We're going to talk about the name of Jesus, that name that's above all names, that every knee shall bow someday to. And um, kind of a, it's one of these teachings, it's, it's pretty simple actually but it's it's will be the most important decision you ever make in your life if you haven't already made a decision to make jesus christ the lord in your life and uh what we want to do this morning uh, or today we, we want to uh, start off with uh, the gospel of john uh, chapter 14 verse 6. Uh, this is a verse that is really uh, special to me, near and dear to my heart, if you will. I've read it and I've shared it on teachings hundreds of times, and it still never gets old to share it again. Jesus saith unto him, he's Thomas asking him, how do we know the way and all that? He says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. <clears throat> okay, now, Jesus Christ, he either told the truth here, which we believe he did, or he was lying. And when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man comes unto the Father but by me, if that is the truth, there have to be ways for us to get to know him and come unto the Father. And what we're going to do here, and it, the, the word name, uh, let me step back for a second, the word name uh, is the word onomo, which means a name of authority. Jesus' name was a name of authority, and part of that word talks about understanding from the Greek word gnosko, and it's, we're not to just have a, a knowledge of the name, but we're to understand everything that's behind it. So that's what we're going to delve to get into today. Okay, uh, now we're going to uh, go to John chapter 14. In uh, verse 13 here, on, uh, as he leads. And uh, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, there's that word name again, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. It's not every single thing that you ask in his name, but if you're in, if you're in fellowship with him, if you're in fellowship with the, with the Lord, uh, you ask things, you know, pray, prayers get answered. Uh, it says in Psalms that uh, the Lord inhabits the prayers of his people. And it's so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And now we're going to go to um, John chapter 16. And verses 23 and 24. This is very familiar. These, these verses that I'm going to be sharing are very familiar. You've heard them probably hundreds of times, even maybe thousands of times. But they're still very important to to look at each each word that is each word that is written in here. And in that day ye shall ask nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Your joy may be full. See, it's. Whatsoever you ask in the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, it's that name, it's that name of authority. Okay. Now let's go to John chapter 17, and we're going to start on we're going to start building this a little bit here. And in verse 6, I have manifested thy name, and this is a prayer that this is Jesus praying to the Father. I have manifested thy name unto men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. That's a key, kept thy word. That's the fellowship. It's very important to keep. And in verse 11, here, of the same chapter. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. See, he gave 
his prayer was that these followers of him that would be in the world that he would be that they would be kept that you know through his name you know that the glory was always going to go to the father but jesus was was saying look Father, you and I are one, and it's, it's very important that they continue to be in fellowship. And I just need, you know, please be with them throughout all these trials and tribulations that they're going to encounter as time goes on, which we all know happens. In verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, the description might be fulfilled. They were all kept. Jesus Christ was a, a great part of his life and his ministry was prayer. Do you not think that he prayed for his men? That he prayed for the people that he was around? It says in another part of that he got up a great while before day and prayed. I mean, he was constantly a man who was in prayer. He was each day before they went out, I'm sure that they had prayer time. There's a lot of things that aren't written in the Gospels, but you just know that they're traveling. They did things. They did things together. They lived together. They ate together. They, you know, did everything together. In verse 26, and I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Now he's talking about future now because the day of Pentecost had not come yet. But he talks about, he, he was the comfort of having Jesus Christ physically with them was going to be removed when he was crucified. And he was crucified and laid in the tomb. And, you know, after he raised, after God raised him from the dead, he appeared unto people for many, many days. And then he ascended up on high. And then after that, you know, they're going, okay, now he's gone. What are we going to do? And they tarried in Jerusalem until they had the promise of the Father on the day of Pentecost. And that was the other comforter, I believe. That's my interpretation of it. I believe it's, I believe it's accurate. The comforter is something that we need. And it talks about that all through the epistles that it even says it in here, wherefore, wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's in Colossians 127. That's an extra verse if you want to look it up. We're not going to go there right now. Okay, now we're going to go to the book of Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Now it says the Acts of the Apostles, but then, <laughs> everything is the Acts of the Holy Spirit in, in, in the book of Acts when you when you realize what they what they had you know who they had been with excuse me who they had been with and what they had seen and what they had experienced and in acts chapter 2 and verse 21 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved okay now you can go back and read the beginning of this and that's a day of pentecost and cloven tongues like as a fire sat on each of them and they spoke with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance and it's it's a real exciting time. Many thousands of people were saved. But whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, my question for you, has that changed over the years? Is that no longer a um, feasible thing since we're in the year 2023? Okay, it's changed now because of all the thousands of years that have gone by. No, still, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's by grace you're saved, not of works lest any man should boast. Okay, now we're going to go down to uh, verse 38. Got to be one of my favorite verses in the Word. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Buddha. No, no. In the name of Ali Akbar. No, it doesn't say that. No. It says, Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. Okay. 
You're going to be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Okay, and Jesus Christ covered it. He was the one that came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He in It talks about in Hebrews how they had to do these sacrifices constantly. The priests had to sacrifice for the people, you know, for their own, the priest's sins and also the sins of the people. But Jesus Christ came and his, his blood was accepted. The, his sacrifice was accepted by God once for all, you know, for all time. That's a pretty heavy thing when you think about it. Well, how can that be? Well, it was, and it was accepted. And it's not like we have to keep doing this. We have to keep trying to live. The word says that we stand before him blameless in love because our identity is with the Lord Jesus Christ. It never says we're faultless. It never says we're not going to make mistakes. We make mistakes all the time. Everybody makes them. You know, if somebody comes along and says, you know, I never make any, <laughs> stay away from that person because, you know, you, you're probably going to find out that they make them. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to go to Acts chapter 3, and I want to read a record here that's that's pretty exciting here. And this is this is really proof of the power that's in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to read verses 1 through 16. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. I'll stop for a second there. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The power in that name. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. This is a tremendous. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Look at this verse. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God, and they thought he was a nut. That's my addition to that verse right there, because that's basically what anybody would think today if somebody was lame from their mother's womb and got healed. He entered into the temple. He didn't get up and say, thanks, you guys. I'm taking off. I'm going to go home and tell everybody. No, he went in with them. <laughs> This is fantastic. Look, I can walk. He was he was leaping, which means he was just overwhelmed. He, he was full of joy, praising God. And the people saw him walking and praising God. The people saw him. They went, oh, look, who is that? And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him. You know, they were filled with wonder and amazement. Okay, we go down to verse 11. And a lame man which was healed held Peter and John, as the lame man held Peter and John, which I, I, I look at this as he was in the middle and he had his arms around both of them. All the people ran together with him in the porches, called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he asked, answered the people, said, You men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac, of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. You guys, they were, he was determined to let him go, but you guys had him crucified. And ye denied the Holy One and just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And here's the verse here. And his name 
through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath made given him this perfect sound in the presence of ye all. You see that? That's sufficient. The faith which is by him, in his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong. They ministered healing to him. See, we don't have silver and gold, but in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. A physical impossibility for this man to rise up and walk. But yet he did. Well, that was just for that time because that was the book of Acts and the church started, you know, and does God really still do that kind of stuff? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Is it his prerogative to heal? Yes. Is it always going to be immediate? No. Um, God has a timetable for everything. You know, we've a lot of times don't know how long things are going to take. But when you read the word, you see that there's these examples are in there so that we can have our faith, you know, our faith grow. And when we read these records, we think these are real people. This this guy was not some this is was not some fantasy or some made for TV movie. This was a real guy, you know, who was there and he had a need and his need was met. And he was made whole. And it says perfect soundness. Is that another thing that we quickly gloss over? Perfect soundness. You know, I mean, he's, his body was healed. And he was jumping and leaping and, and, and very blessed. And I'm sure they probably, they probably couldn't shut him up for a, a week about how excited he was about having strength and being able to walk, which he had never done. Think about that. You had never walked before, and all of a sudden you could walk. What are you going to do? You're going to walk, and you're going to go, hey, this is interesting. This is d different. And then you're going to say, hey, these guys just, in the name of Jesus Christ, told me I could walk, and I'm walking. Hey, where are they? Oh, cool. I'm going to go leap. We're going to go in the temple. I'm going to praise God, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be with these guys. I'm going to hang out with these guys. These guys have these guys have something going. Pretty exciting. Okay, uh, now we're going to go to Acts chapter nine. But the Lord said unto him, "Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings, and the children of Israel. Um, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake." And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, hath appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received his sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on his this name in Jerusalem? And came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound to the chief priests. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. You see how they quickly changed their, their tune here? Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto him how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out of Jerusalem, and he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians. But they went about to slay him. Um, the reason I had this section put in there, now this is the 
conversion of, of Saul, you know, his Hebrew name, Saul's Greek name, Paul. And in the name of Jesus Christ, th there's so much power in that name. You know, Jesus appeared uh, to him on his road to Damascus. Now he was heading there to lead people captive. You know, he was, he was basically had an arrest warrant to go there and to get any of the people that were followers of the way, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, to haul them off to prison and, you know, many of them would be executed. But the Lord appeared to him and uh, changed. His life was changed. And this disciple, Ananias, prayed for him. And, uh, and Eastern culture is interesting, too, because in the Eastern culture, you don't... Um, you don't say to somebody brother unless they are really a brother. You you don't, you know, we use that term in, in our society kind of maybe a little loosely. Um, I, I don't consider uh, using the term uh, when we're talking in, on uh, Tuesday nights, uh, you know, like I'm brother Bob Hagen. That's, I'm, I'm brother, a brother to the, to the guys that are, born again in God's spirit, and they're my brothers too, and spiritually they are, and I don't take that light. But this was a big deal, you know, for Ananias to say, Brother Saul, you know, I've been sent, and this is, you know, you're going to, this is going to be something. Your life is going to definitely be changed. But you have a man who was intent on leading people to their deaths, who was converted, and became the catalyst, uh, one of the key people in the first century to for the move of the Word of God. It wasn't his, completely him, but he had a great deal to do with it. His letters, um, uh, his witness of what had happened and how his life had changed. Uh, I believe it had a lot to do with the witness of Stephen, who was um, stoned and you know, Saul was consenting into his death. I think when Saul saw that, he probably thought to himself, oh boy, you know, this, this man's willing to die for his faith. And it, I think it really started to give him some questions. He started having questions about, well, you know, maybe, maybe this is right. Maybe this is true. Maybe this is something I ought to think about. So anyway, that's kind of my take on this, but it was kind of an exciting time for him. But he, you know, he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, he 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 wasn't going in there with any any hesitation. He said he went in there and he said, "Look, I I was on the wrong road and I was doing things." You know, he probably a lot of um, time to tell people, "Hey, I'm sorry for what I did. I, I was." I was wrong, but he disputed against the Grecians. You know, he said, uh, you know, this is the real way is the Lord Jesus Christ. And, but they went about to slay him. And who had they slayed before that? They had slayed Jesus Christ. So they were, they didn't like to have any kind of um, differences of opinion. Gosh, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? It's almost like you're turning the TV on today and, you have people that have a difference of opinion and you want to, you want to quiet them. You don't want them to say anything. Okay. Now let's go to uh, Acts chapter four. Ah, thank you, my good man. Acts chapter four. And this is a verse that I want to share because this is, a, <clears throat> this is a scripture that was shared with me many years ago. And, and I still treasure it. Neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name should be in large letters. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby, whereby we must be saved. Okay. Neither is there salvation in any other. Okay. Well, what about Muhammad? What about Buddha? What about the people that are worshiping nature? What about all these other new age religions. And it doesn't say neither is there salvation. It doesn't say there's salvation in all 
8,500 religions or whatever there are in the world. He says there is salvation and neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, the name of Jesus Christ, named under heaven, whereby he must be saved. Okay. Hmm. How about that? So there has to be, that has to be the way it is. Okay. Now we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 1. The breakfast of champions, we call Ephesians. And this name, once again, talking about the name of Jesus Christ. Excuse me for a second here. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. And now we're going to go to... Uh, Ephesians chapter five in verse twenty. We're gonna kind of, we're kind of go through these kind of quickly here, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we pray, we thank God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can thank God in the name of Jesus. We can thank God in the name of the Lord Jesus when we pray. Many times on here. In Jesus' name, that's fine. But the main thing is that it, you're giving thanks for all things unto God. You know, sometimes things are hard to, excuse me, sometimes it's hard to be thankful for things when they're not going well. Do you ever have that problem? Oh, of course not. No, I never. No, everything's always smooth to me. No, no that's, that's, not, that's not the way it is. We could talk about these things, and there's many times that things happen. If you've been uh, watching uh, Uptime on Tuesday nights for the last couple of years, we've gone through a lot of changes. There's been a lot of challenges. There's been health challenges. There's been all kinds of different things that have gone on with the, the group that's been on there, and um, which I am very honored to call my brothers. Uh, there's been many triumphs there's been many uh things that have been uh, understanding has been opened to us and it's because god has given us the ability to understand these things you know not that we're you know just because we're doing this doesn't mean that we're any better than anyone else we're not we just have a desire um a burden, if you will, that people come back to the truth, to a knowledge of the truth, which is so vitally important in this day and time. Because a lot of people are out there, they're getting blown about by every wind of doctrine. It says by the cunning craftiness of men, by where they want lie in wait to deceive. There's there's so many different things out there that are that are vying for people's attention. Okay, now let's go to Philippians chapter two. In verses 9 and 10, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, Jesus Christ, and given him a name which is above all names, which is above every name. There we go. It's above every name again. Why does it always say that? For? Huh. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. That name is pretty powerful. Every knee should bow. Did Jesus always do the will of the Father? Yes. Did he have to do the will of the Father? In the Garden of Gethsemane, when he, when he said, you know, Father, if there's any other way for this cup to be removed from me, can you do it? But not my will, but thine be done. He said, this is going to be, he knew this was going to be really something. But he was still willing to go through what he went through, to lay down his life for you and me, for the joy that was set before him. I've said this many times before, too. Was it a joy to be beaten? 
Was it a joy to have nails driven into his flesh and whipped? There was no joy in that. There's no joy in being beaten. But the joy that was set before him was knowing that what he was accomplishing was for the salvation of men, of mankind. It's hard to really sometimes understand the amount of love that went into that. I don't understand it, how somebody could love that much. But greater love has no man. Then he laid down his life for his friends. And we're going to read in chapter 2 of Ephesians, and we're going to read through from verses 11 to 22. And the reason I put this in here is because I, it's just, I want you to think about these words as I read them here. This is God's word. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off, and I always say and far out, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he, Christ, is our peace, who hath made both one, Jew and Gentile, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, and hath abolished in his flesh the enmity, the, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. That's the end of enmity with God, peace. We, we, we don't, just think about this. That he might reconcile both to God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were nigh. And uh, in verse 18. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into an holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are built together for habitation of God through the Spirit. So God made it available for the Gentiles to become a part of the body. It wasn't a promise in the Old Testament. That wasn't something that, um, it was a mystery. It was hidden. But he made that available. And what was Paul's ministry? You know, Paul, he went out and, won the world for Jesus Christ. Well, he the known world, it says in Acts that the, the, they turned the world upside down, which means they turned it right side up. But it says in verse 21, in whom all the building fitly framed together, growth into a holy temple in the Lord. It's not haphazardly. It, it, God doesn't throw things together haphazardly. The building is being fitly framed together. There, each time there's another person that gets born again, it's an, another another pers person that's added uh, to the holy temple in the Lord. If you want to look at it that way, it's another it's another stone. It's another stone of great great value. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone, but he's the one that's putting all this together. This is a this is phenomenally exciting stuff. It really is. In the name of Jesus Christ, there's great power. The name of Jesus Christ is why people get, they, people get set free from addictions. People get set free from uh, physical ailments. People get set free from just having just nothing but confusion in their minds. Over the, you know, way back, you know, and still sometimes, but, you know, it's just, it's amazing. This is amazing stuff. And um, what I want to end up with is I want I want to go to Psalm 119 to uh, kind of wrap up. They've got a couple of scriptures here. Psalm 119 verses uh, 129 and 130. Psalm 119, which is an acrostic psalm. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore doth my soul keep them. 
The entrance of thy words gives light, it gives understanding unto the simple. The acrostic psalm, it, the word is used in every, every verse. Uh, it's either used as the word testimony or precept or um, whatever other things it's used as, you know, um, commandments. But the word here says, I testimonies are wonderful, therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. And finally, Psalm 139 and verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, you know, God, he doesn't haphazardly throw us together. Every life is precious. Um, all of life is precious. Uh, the name of Jesus Christ is, is a name that I'm thankful I can use. And I know that if you're uh, watching today, I just um, thankful that you took the time to watch uh, and listen. Um, I just thank God for being able to do this. Uh, if you have any kind of comments, you can go to HaganRW52 at Yahoo.com. If there's something you want to tell me, that, you know, if you if you think I'm out in left field with this or whatever, if you really enjoyed it, I appreciate the comments. I'm thankful that uh, we can do this uh, every other week and and uh, continue to do it as long as uh, we're still here. <laughs> You know, maybe maybe by next week we'll all be raptured out of here, so we don't have to be concerned about that anymore. But I just want to um, once again thank Greg for taking the time to help me with this today, and um, uh, I just want to uh, pray to close us out. Thank you, Lord, for for the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you that you sent Him that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you that we can realize that it is Christ in us, the hope of glory, and that we have that Holy Spirit within us as a counselor and as a comforter closer than our next breath. I thank you for the upcoming week uh, when people are going to be watching this and being with them and bless them. And if they have not made you Lord in their lives, that they will make that decision. And they will make it because it will be the right decision to make. So I thank you for these things. And thank you for your word, which you magnified above all your name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now catch you on down the road. Peace.